Hello, you're watching PC Jack. If you're a fan of the channel, you may recognize this system as the build I put together about a year ago at this point. This is my 16TB TrueNAS, which has actually been a really useful system and I use it pretty much every day. And while I've used this a lot and had some great success with using it, there are some things that I need to address, and that is that this thing has been running 24-7 for near enough a year. And of course, with any system that's running for a sustained period of time, it builds up a lot of dust. So in today's video, I thought I would give this system the cleaning that it deserves and also show you guys how to clean a system if you've never done so before. So there's going to be a couple of things you're going to need, but we'll go through that as we get through the rest of the video. But for now though, let's open this up and check out the damage. So I can already see there's quite a bit caked on the, uh, the ventilation on the side, but let's get this glass panel off and take a look inside properly. Now, with the side panel off, and take a look inside, it's actually not too bad, all things considered. But the very first step we're going to do is get a lot of the dust blown out that's built up. And then once we've done that, we can actually get a bit more closer in and uh, actually get the dust removed. So to blow out all the dust, we're going to use this Deavac. Now, uh, you can use compressed air, but personally, I think it's much better to get one of these. A bit more expensive than compressed air, but at least you can use this as much as you want. And it really does a good job of getting all that dust blown out. So I'm gonna take this somewhere a bit more ventilated besides my office and see how we get on. One other thing that I should quickly mention as well is that when you're using the data vac to blow out all the dust, it's a good idea to make sure your fans don't spin up because of the air, because you don't want to spin the fans too much so that they can send power back into the motherboard and damage your headers perhaps. So what I'll also do is I'll unplug the fans from the fan headers just to be safe, but also you can just hold them by hand to make sure they don't spin. Okay, so that's a little bit better now we've blown out all that dust from the case itself along with the actual dust filters. Now what I am going to do is just get a little bit deeper and start dusting it a bit more thoroughly. I was thinking I would take out the 3.5 inch drives, but they don't look that dusty to be honest. So I'll probably give them a brush over, but I'll leave them in the case. That'll be fine. But I am going to pull the motherboard out and give that a thorough cleaning. And I'm going to also change the film base only because I actually am going to be using this motherboard for something later in the week. So it's going to be a non true nice task but uh, it needs to have the cooler swapped over, which is fine. I am actually gonna remove some of these NFA-12s because I think I kind of overdid it a little bit because I got one in the rear, one in the top, and there's three in the front. And I can think of much more important things to use those for besides in a true NAS, which really doesn't build up much of a load. It's not as if cooling is uh, much of an issue, but we'll take a few out and just maybe swap them with some cheaper fans or just keep things very minimal in terms of fan placement in the case. And yeah, uh, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now that we've got the actual motherboard out of the system, we can start to give the motherboard a bit more of a thorough cleaning. And to be fair, it's actually not as bad as I expected, but I will still give it a little brush over just to get any sort of loose bits of dust out. And to do that, what I would generally use is this makeup brush, which uh, you might think would be an issue for ESD, but actually it's nice and soft and it doesn't really generate that much ESD, or if any at all. So I like to use this because it's nice and soft and it's not likely to uh, damage anything on the board. And it's a good way to lift up any dust that doesn't come up with the data back. But for now though, I think the first thing I'm going to do is just get this thermal paste cleaned up. And if you are wondering how you actually clean up thermal paste, I do have a dedicated video on how I clean thermal paste. So what I'll do, I'll leave that in the description and you can use that as a bit of a thorough guide for how to clean your CPU. So the actual system is now completely cleaned up and the last thing I am going to do is just give the tempered glass panel a bit of a clean and for that it's tempered glass so the best thing would be to use some sort of window cleaner like this one I've got here and I also like to use a lint free cloth because it's going to be nice and soft and help you avoid scratching the glass but obviously you want to use something that will be nice and soft and uh, 
This usually does the trick for me. So we'll give this a quick clean and then we can put it back on the case. Okay, so I've cleaned out as much of the case as I possibly can, as well as the motherboard. And everything else is looking pretty clean now. So I think now is going to be the time we're actually going to reassemble the system and we're pretty much good to go. Okay, now that's a much cleaner system. Admittedly, the system wasn't actually too bad, but it's still a good idea to clean out your system from time to time just to avoid dust buildup, as that can actually be detrimental to your system and thermals. For a system that gets as much use as this does, I'm glad to take the time just to give it a little bit of TLC and help it sparkle once again. And hopefully, if you're looking to clean your system, this should point you in the right direction for the way that I would clean something and help you for your own system as well. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PCJack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while having to fund everything on the channel for you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.